Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have our very special guest. She is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on The Advisor, and she is Dr. Marcella Romando. She is an amazing person who is very well-educated in health and weight loss, and she talks about many different topics related to eating disorders and so forth. Today, she really wants to tap into the topic about weight loss injectables. And I'm going to give the stage to uh, Dr. Marcello and and, and tell and have Marcella tell you a little about what uh, weight loss injectables are and go really in depth about them. So Dr. Marcella, tell, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do and so forth. Thank you, Stacy, and thank you for having me. I am really excited to be on your podcast and having my own little series here. And so, um, and I, I, I love our collaboration. I love our 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 dialogue and exchange. And so, this is really it's fun for me as well as like um, really meaningful. So, thank you. Oh, you're uh, welcome. I am. Um, I'm Marcella Raimondo, and I'm a psychologist. I also uh, do. Um, trainings and consultation, and I, I I supervise folks in California who are looking to be licensed as a therapist. And I really, um, it centers around eating disorders and, and work on eating disorders, and more than just eating disorders, but looking at <clears throat> diet culture and, and body image uh, and our relationship with food and while folks may not have a full-blown eating disorder that is medically concerning, just the constant focus on dieting, just the constant focus on what I'm eating, just the constant focus on is this good or bad, and, and just looking at like the, the mental toll that, that takes on us, and also the diet culture that we live in that, that really encourages and promotes um, and even demands that, 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 that we engage in, in those behaviors. And so it's, it's a big topic, it's an important topic, and it, it, it's a topic that, that, that I welcome in terms of hearing everyone's perspectives on it because everyone has their own, own perspective. And so today I, I wanted to talk to you about the topic of weight loss injectables. Um, we've, we've seen um, like the news, the media, the flashing of Ozempic and Wagovi. We, we see these like, is this the drug that will, um, and just these kind of really sensational titles, like is this the drug that will cure obesity? Um, and I say obesity in, in quotes, um, be, because first I, I don't like saying that word because I find it really medically pathologizing but just this kind of sensational notion like being in a large body is something that we need to cure or or eradicate from 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 our planet so it just even starts to create that and seeing the buzz and and the the uh, the, uh, the craze around it um just in in my work hearing folks um, that that I've worked with ask like I'd like to be on this can I can I give this a a try um and uh, and also hearing from numerous doctors who say I'm actually really concerned about these weight loss in injectables and we don't have enough data and, and information on them, but we do have some. And uh, there is a really phenomenal activist and she does like incredible research. Her name is Reagan Chastain and she has pulled out a lot of data about about these injectables and that they're dangerous and they are doing things to your bodies and your organs that um that are actually medically concerning people have died from them or if you're not in a medically concerning place people share how miserable they are because the side effects are just horrific so it's wow. just something for us to pause at and, and say like huh all of this for weight loss you know, it's it's crazy because, you know, people have struggled with weight loss, you know, forever. You know, there's so many people out there. We all have little, you know, um, we're never satisfied with ourselves, really. Think about it. We're never satisfied with how we look. We can go in the mirror and I'm sure every single person you put in front of the mirror, they can tell you at least 10 flaws about the outside of their body that they don't like. And, you know, when it comes to weight loss, people have been battling weight loss for so many years. And, you know, when it boils down to like, you know, it's what we eat, 
you know, how we take care of our bodies, but some people just struggle. They, you know, they said they've tried everything, nothing works, you know, and, you know, some, it goes, we can go with just so many different things, you know, why it doesn't work and what are they eating and, and what makes them fall back into their old habits and so forth. But when it comes to Ozempic, Ozempic and, and, and other injectables that have come out have been a, a huge success. It's been one of those, those fads that, you know, everybody is trying, even people who are not really considered fat or obese, they're, they're, they want to lose those 10 or 15 or 20 pounds and they're trying it. And there isn't a lot of information, but I know it, it has been used for diabetes. Um, but we, you know, we don't have, I, from my perspective, from what I understand, we don't have a lot of knowledge of what the long-term effects is going to be. And I also know that you, I don't think you can be on it for so long. I think there's only a set amount of time that doctors are supposed to keep you on it and that's it. And, you know, so if these people also are going to take injectables, let's say, and, you know, and they don't learn the proper way to eat and like they're used to their old lifestyle, then what's going to happen once they get off of it? Yeah, you lose 40, 50, 60 pounds, but are you going to sustain that weight loss? What has it done to your body? And, you know, and, you know, some people eat because of coping, you know, um, because they can't cope with life or they're not happy with themselves. Some people eat because they just love food. Some people just come from environments where healthy eating was just the norm and that's all they know, you know, but when you go on, when you go into Ozempic or you go on to all these weight loss injectables and you're, you're losing weight so rapidly, you know, what does that do to your body? Because I know like a body is like a rubber band too, you know, and if you lose all that weight, I'm sure the skin doesn't elastically, you know, cling back to the body. So there's lots of things to consider, you know, it's a shock to the body. And then, you know, I've known people also that have tried these rapid weight loss diets and these injectables and, and they lost hair because their bodies wanted to shock. So I know I threw a lot of information to you right now, but I'm just, you know, like, you know, like, from your perspective, you know, what is these weight loss injectables doing to our society and what can they do in the future? Mm -hmm. I mean, Stacey, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. I, I mean, it's, there are so many aspects from philosophical to psychological and then medical and then holistic. I mean, there's so many different angles we, we can take and, and, and you touched on so many of them and pretty much um, all of them. I mean, first of all, absolutely. Like the body is in shock. Like, what are we doing? What is happening here? And so just holistically and for those who are even like physics majors like that just seems like an equilibrium just thrown off completely like how can the body even like like you know adjust to that and, and even comprehend that and so aspects of like losing hair or because your body's in in, in shock um absolutely true and then there's another piece and, and, and Reagan Chastain even like produced some data pointing out that once you get off the drug, your body will regain the weight, like because um, it's just now going back to whatever system. So it, it, it is saying you would have to take this forever if you want to keep the weight loss. And some folks might be like, that's fine, but you'll die. I mean, you it, it's like th there's the. Um, because then you touched on another point about diabetes. I'm like, yes, actually, metformin and others are really good for diabetes. When you take the right dose, it helps with the hemoglobin A1Cs. It, 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 it helps. And those are the folks that need to take the, uh, the uh, drugs. Um, and sadly, they're not getting them anymore because the demand for these injectables are, are so huge. The folks that actually need them can't get them anymore, folks with, with diabetes. Yeah. And the demand is so huge that um, companies are like, oh, we can make money off of this. So they're very expensive now. And so folks that need them for diabetes can't afford them anymore. So we're already creating a really um, um, injustice system here by our pursuit for weight loss because folks that need them can't get them. either. Right. No supply or they can't afford it. They're, I mean, they might have been like, wait, I used to pay, you know, $100. Now I'm having to pay $1,000. Like, I can't afford this. And that's right. real. 
So there's that aspect. Um, there's also the other aspect. I mean, folks have shared time and time again that I'll be so much happier when I lose weight. And there are things that happen for folks when you lose weight, like privilege that you didn't have before opens up to you. Yeah. And I've also talked with folks who have shared with me of, I thought I'd be happy, but I'm not. Or I didn't know who I am anymore. Or I thought, you know, this was a good thing, but this is also too much for me. And so um, folks have sh have shared, like, I've been wanting to lose weight my entire life. And, 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 for, and, and, and for losing a, a significant amount of weight in a short period of time and have people respond to them differently is... Um, it can be a really um, shocking um, uh, thing to have to adjust to for one's like mental health and one's psyche. And so folks think like, well, that'll be great. I'm like, actually, no, it can be overwhelming and it can be too much actually for a human being to endure. So it's another thing to, 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 to point out. Um, you also pointed out about skin and elasticity and yeah, that, that 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 is a true thing of that you know you might think oh, it's going to be great that i lose weight and then you're going to have skin hang off of you and so just to think about like if we are talking about appearance yeah i mean just just to think about that like you'll lose weight and you'll have skin hanging off of you and hair loss like since we're on the topic of appearance you know yeah um, mm -hmm. and then another aspect if someone has a really um, emotional relationship with food or they're using food to cope or they're using food to avoid aspects of, of, of their life yeah the weight loss is not gonna help or change that um, you're still gonna have your troubled relationship with food ways to cope and aspects of your life that you are avoiding um, and sometimes folk, folks use food to cope because of so many systemic injustices and I can imagine if someone uses food to cope to deal with systemic injustices and now they have a more privileged body and then what does that do to their relationship with food? It can get very complicated and messy yeah. and just a big turmoil. Yeah. So I, I have yet to see someone tell me a positive aspect, except, except the big glaring one that you and I talk about and the big, big glaring one is for folks that have shared, I've lost weight and my life is a little easier for me now because of diet culture and, and sharing that I don't get stares anymore. I, I, I can eat ice cream in public. I mean, just I, I can do exercise um, and not have comments you know, come my way. I can go see my doctor for an earache and we actually talk about my earache and not yeah. needing to lose weight. That's what, you know, bothers me so much about our societies that we have yeah. so much stigmatism and labelism in our society that everybody labelizes somebody. You meet somebody and they say your first appearance is, is, is it that people make judgment on your, when they first meet somebody that they don't know right then and there, they, they labelize them in their head. And a lot of times those, those don't, those, those labelisms don't change. You know, um, I think it's very hard because people, you know, they want to be, they want to feel accepted. You know, there are more followers than leaders and people are, you know, because they, we have this classic norm, but norm is not, um, norm is what society makes it. There is no such thing as normal. It's what we perceive normal as. And even when, when it comes to being overweight, uh, you know, when you get to a certain point where you, you know, it should be because you want to be healthy. It shouldn't be because you want to, you know, you feel good about yourself. That's part of it. But you, your your main factor, I think, too, is, is that you don't want to come up with diabetes. You don't want to come up with heart failure. You don't want to have a high blood pressure. You don't want to, you want to be able to walk. A lot of overweight people have trouble walking because there's so much weight pressed against their ankles and their feet that they they wobble and they have trouble walking. And, and you know, and many people have strokes and so forth. These are things that should be a person's first concern. You know, am I at that stage where I'm gaining so much weight that it's affected my health and my life, you know, and I can't keep up with my family because my weight is, is, you know, pushing me back, you know, instead people are worried about, you know, how they, how they look to satisfy themselves on the outside and they're not thinking about the inside. 
Right. And, um, and, and, and bringing up points about what kind of eating do I do? Do I, what, what, what kind of food do I have access to? Um, am I able to do movement in my life? Um, and, and this focus of, of if I don't lose weight, then all these efforts are not worth it. And I would, I would, um, contradict that as well as under you know as well as provide all the space where someone was like i wanted to lose weight and and feeling that that kind of that that grief or, or what happened and and that sadness um and i you know would understand because of or or, or provide you know um, a space for for that for that sad feeling because of all of diet culture um and yet pointing out that uh like yet you know, given our, our, our weight stigma society, like, like celebrating weight loss, being sad about weight gain, like we have to really balance that. Like, like, yes, your, your, your feelings are a response to diet culture, but they're not inherently good or, or bad things. Uh, and mm -hmm. where do we have room to, to celebrate someone who's like, I did make changes. I'm, 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 I'm eating more, more, more balanced foods. I'm, I'm able to really look at what I, I am eating. And if I'm using it to cope, I'm spending more time with loved ones. I'm eating with loved ones. I'm walking more. I didn't think I could walk, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it more. I'm more flexible. I'm able to, um, to, to tie my shoes. I don't get out of breath so easily my my heart rate my cholesterol has all improved um would you but let's say this person really didn't lose weight would you say it's all not worth it anymore right yeah like to really just think about that like there are so many benefits to to improving our relationship with food and movement now you were talking about long-term effects like how is ozempic dangerous for the individual or how are some of these weight loss quick weight loss you know injectables you know bad for people like what have you heard from your side what i've heard and what um and again this is from the um data that um, reagan has um produced is pointing out like from a medical perspective that um there is just um organs are being compromised organs can can possibly go through failure. I mean, a long term effect is as um, people can actually die from from taking these um, uh, these injectables. Uh, long term effects are just these. I don't know if the side effects go away or not, um, but just this it, it is a um, it is a chronic wear and tear on the body to to, to have to take these injectables i mean they're um they're they're not safe and when you like even just like think about it like from a medical perspective even if you're not a nurse or a doctor and thinking about okay there's this medication that's for diabetes which i may not have and i'm supposed to take that dose for someone with diabetes um and this and what you are given is a double, triple, quadruple dose for your yeah. body. And like, how can that be good? Like, do we need data? I mean, we're getting data and the data is pointing out that it's not safe and not good yeah. in the long run. But just even thinking about it, like that kind of overdosing my body here. Right. That couldn't be good. Now, have you heard information about how it's it's causing organ failure have i heard information yeah, yeah. um I, i've seen I, I haven't really took such a, a deep dive into the data mm -hmm. but I, I i have seen the data um data is being produced about these are some of the um these are some of the long-term effects of it is compromising the organs is it more like the body's going into shock and it has to work so hard that it, it kind of it, the, the organs just begin to fail because they're, you know, your, your body is rapidly changing and your body probably doesn't even know what's going on. And it's trying to keep up with everything. And maybe it's causing a shock in the body or. I could see causing a shock, 
the injectables kind of creating, um, telling organs they have to work harder or, 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 or slower. And so um, like bodies are just adjusting to new information and new input. And I, I can imagine that the, the new input from the injectables um, are, are just, um, are just making the bodies work overtime um making the bodies like in in shock making the bodies like not sure what to do um and also thinking about like there was a way the bodies responded for folks with diabetes to the medication which helped yeah. like okay we have this um we have this medication it is at, we can adjust and we can improve um the diabetes but you're taking mm -hmm. that your times and timesing it by four and so like can you imagine like the body's like okay what do whoa whoa we we, we have to uh, adjust to all of this um, yeah and like um so there's like that aspect of um and uh what's also um being shown is not everyone who takes the in, the injectables loses weight right so can you also imagine that you know um experience from um wait it worked for you but it didn't work for me and seeing a very dramatic difference yeah and just if we keep going on these injectables as like this is what we accept in our society what does that say to someone who didn't lose weight it's saying, right like, like you didn't try hard enough or keep trying with the injectables, take a, increase your dose even further. I mean, I'm sure this person would go through all the cocktail of injectables to find something, but let's say they didn't. So then it's like, well, let's just double the dose. Let's triple the dose. Let's just keep adding more. Yeah. Um, and also the kind of message that someone would experience, um, if our society moves in the direction of the injectables, um, uh, Tigris, um, um, she's the lead for the National Fat Association, um, Tigris Osborne, and she, she made a statement that is saying that um, around, um, what does it say about our society then? Like if we accept that weight loss injectables is treatment, it is kind of saying that like, well, then no one has an excuse to be fat anymore. No one has right. that, that excuse. So if you are really choosing to remain overweight, then you deserve all the weight stigma then because you are now making that choice. Um, so it, it, it just, um, I don't see any, I don't see any good coming out of this. Um, I don't, um, and where I'm hesitating right now is like just thinking about one of my patients who, who said to me like, Marcella, I just want a break. I just want a break from being in this large body, yeah. even if it's for a short period of time. Yeah. I, I, I just want a break from people constantly staring at me. I, I want a break from like, feeling really anxious if I can eat food in public. She goes, I just want a break from that. And that hurts and, too. Yeah. And I, because our weight stigma society isn't going away anytime soon. I, I'm not saying yes, I'm on board, but just like, I hear that. Yeah. I absolutely hear that this person saying, it's day after day that I experience this. I just want to break from that. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. But I, and I, 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 when you talk about that, I, I understand it completely. And I, the first thing that popped in my head is like, all these, these diets aren't good for you. Like, like even the ketogenic diet, you know, they use that for children, little children with epilepsy and it helped a lot of people, the keto diet, you know, babies. Um, with epilepsy, but then you have people, adults doing it for a very long time. They tell adults, don't do it more than six months. And a lot of them ended up with problems, you know, like gallbladder problems, how to get their gallbladder removed and other things like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's obviously telling you 
going back to the injectables that any type of these diets, when you, when you put such a, um, a shock onto your body, you know, it's, it, it's going to start to fail. It makes sense a hundred percent. And we really should really, before we, we jump into something like this and, and because it's working for so many people. And like you said, it's not going to work for everybody. Cause I've known people on Ozempic and they have a very strict diet regimen that they have to go on. It's not just injected. They're supposed to eat a specific diet, you know, very, very low calorie diet. And so it's, it's, you know, and who, who's going to stay on that diet after the injectables, you know, like, uh, you know, it's a strict diet. And, and then, you know, I've seen people that have lost weight on, on Ozempic and they're in, and they were put on it because they had health problems and they needed to lose weight. And they're, they're eating hamburgers and French fries and shakes. And, you know, they're trying to lose weight and they think because they're losing weight from Ozempic that they're, in, they could still eat like that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's about, it's about, you know, how we care for our body, how we treat our body. We, we, sh you know, if you want to lose weight, we should do it the healthy way, you know, where your body adjusts to it slowly. You know, it's just that in society, people are just frustrated and they want quick results. You know, they, maybe they battled for it for years and they've tried to lose and nothing seems to be working for them. Or like you said, maybe the stigmatism of society about being overweight, you know, they don't want people looking at them anymore. I've had people say that to me. They're sick of people looking at them like they're strange you know, or they're different, you know, they just want to be who they are and they want to be accepted. Right. Yeah. There, there is so much in that. Um, and, and I, I, I've heard, you know, folks like, like share, like, like, but, but folks just like, yeah, like are, are, are not taking care of themselves. And I, um, and I, I think like it, it would be important to, to ask like well, what is getting in the way of of someone not um taking care of themselves um and, and also i have worked with with folks who have shared um, um and, and these are both um folks just across the gender spectrum who have shared like like the what 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 you were talking about in, in terms of folks that are eating burgers and fries and it seems like that that is all they're, they're you know they're eating and, and and folks have shared like like a certain kind of giving up, a certain kind of depression, a certain like for some folks it's a certain kind of frustration of I've tried every diet and what I've yeah. tried to say is like you've been duped. You've been duped to think that these diets were going to work. You've been trying them or you were put on them in, in childhood. So your body is in a state of shock, in a state of like the starvation mode. Yeah. Um, because it, it it doesn't feel like we're getting flow, we're getting we're getting energy, um, we're, we're getting nourishment. Um, so it is in this like holding shock state, and so it's it's folks have who have, who have like been in large bodies, and it looks like they are from the outside perspective not taking care. A lot of folks are saying I've given up or I'm tired. I mean, these are folks who have seen me um, and saying like I've tried. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Um, and um, I also think looking at your relationship with food is a very deep relationship and very important work, and yet it's emotional work. Yeah. Um, I, I have worked with folks who will tell me they want to do this work. And then I've noticed like, you know, I'm, I'm working with someone right now. And I, he's like, you, you know, and, and we talked about like, I've been very, very like gentle, um, because I, I, I do think this work involves like a lot of space, a lot of patience. Um, and, and I pointed out to him, like, you know, I've, I've given you activities of how we can address your relationship with food and you haven't done a single activity. So I, I just want to bring this up now of like, are you ready to like, look at, at your relationship with food? It, it, it asks some deep questions. I, I, I know this isn't easy. And yet, um, this is what you, you came to see me for. So how could we start this work that doesn't feel like it would be so shatteringly overwhelming in yeah. how, like what like on on your terms would feel like 
safe or what on your terms would be like, okay, this is what I can do right now. This is, I call it kind of like the, the, the 5% stretch, like, like yeah. where your comfort zone is like, let's just stretch 5%. Let's not stretch right. 30%, let's stretch 5%. And I think having to unravel one's relationship with food and kind of put together a new one involves like, let's just make sure we go at 5% beyond the comfort zone. Right. And it's hard work, Stacey. And yet folks have shared, like it is some of the most liberating work they have done when they're like, oh, I don't have to like have all of this and maybe their bodies changed, maybe their bodies haven't changed, but they have shared like, I am just not, I mean, one person said she called it a mental prison and she goes, I I'm just not there anymore. And she said, my body has not changed, but she goes, wow, the space in my head did. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, that makes sense. I, I know when I started going through menopause, my body completely changed. And, you know, even even parts of my body got wider. And and, and I'm like, for, I think for the last 10 years, I've been trying to lose 10 pounds and, and my body plateaued. It, it doesn't want to budge. I go up two, up two pounds, down two pounds, up two pounds, down two pounds, you know, and it, it does get frustrating. You know, you kind of when you're trying to lose weight and you're not getting there, it, it can be mentally draining for your brain. Definitely. Right. right. You know, now and in this, to, yeah, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, and to have to ask yourself like, okay, am I going to be chasing this the rest of my life? Cause this is kind of tiring. It is, it is, you know, you just want to feel good, get up in the morning and look at yourself and be happy, you know? And when you're not happy with yourself, you know, it, it, it caused lots of negative emotions and could be very frustrating, you know, mentally and physically, you know, but from whatever we talked about today, if you really wanted to emphasize on some important factors that we talked about today, what are some of the messages you really want to get across to people who are struggling with weight loss and looking for those, those solutions? And some of them are dipping into weight loss injectables or they're considering it. What's your, what's your emphasis on, on everything we discussed and things you really want people to understand? Um, folks, I want folks to understand is that all our diets don't work. All our diets are repackaged since the 50s. And yes. in fact, some of the, um, there are numerous like researchers, physicians, before diet culture just became this looming thing, pointing out that like weight loss efforts don't work. I mean, this has been well, <clears throat> well documented. So here we are 2024 and getting, and, and having some folks from the 1950s say like, this is this, our bodies don't lose weight and these, these efforts are not gonna work. So thinking about that, um, that, uh, we have known this, it just hasn't been broadcasted to you. So this constant hearing that you can lose the weight is, is not true and you're being duped right now. Um, and thinking about too, like think about all that money you've been spending to try to lose weight. So just think about that um, and it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself, don't, 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 um, um, don't put yourself down. Um, give yourself a lot of compassion and love for the part of you that does want to lose weight. Like, of course, yeah. yes. And also know like, that's really, that's diet culture that has influenced you um, mm -hmm. and kind of brainwashed you, um, but it is emotional. It is emotional. I would ask folks like, think about your values. What is important to you? Think about as we age and grow in our society, what a privilege that that is. Um, think about like, like, it, like, is pursuing weight loss for myself and other people going to make our society kind and, and just? Probably not. So think about like, wouldn't I rather put my energy into ways that I could be happy? And with that, that would give me energy to see where people who are less fortunate than me, how can I help them for that way they can be happy? So yeah. thinking about like, wouldn't I want to put my energy into having more of a just, accessible, kind society than mm -hmm. weight loss? Like it, that, that doesn't create kindness. Um, no. So it, it's, it's, it's just thinking about and think about like, what kind of relationship do I want with food? 
Yeah. Um, thinking about like when I was a baby or a toddler or young, before all the messaging came in, I was exploring my relationship with food um, and, and thinking about like, yeah, I want to go back to that balance where I eat mm -hmm. when I'll have ice cream on a hot day and I'll also have watermelon on a hot day. Right. I'll have a stew because it feels hearty, but then other times I'll have a salad because it feels refreshing and, and nice. Yeah. And yeah. so just that kind of relationship. I, you know, it, I, I think you're right on the nose and it's a hundred percent what you said. You know, um, I also like, you know, when you were talking yesterday, we had somebody on our show and she talked about eating disorders. And one thing she brought up was 98% of the diets fail. And that's, that's right. a sustained fact. And, you know, she wanted, she wanted to emphasize that when she was on the show talking yesterday, that 98% of the diets fail. Just like you said, we have had the same diet since the 1950s and we have gotten nowhere. You know, we've just cycling and it was just like closed cycle, the fashion cycle. So do the diets, but you know what, this has been great before we go. Can you tell everybody your website and the services that you have? Sure. Um, I am at www.marcellaedtraining.com. And I provide trainings for um, mental health clinics to schools, to work settings, so looking at disordered eating, eating disorders, diet culture, social justice, body image. I also provide individual therapy for folks in the state of California. Um, I provide consultation for folks who um, may be working with folks with eating disorders or family members and, and just need um, just need some um, advice um, and, and support. Um, and lastly, I provide clinical supervision for folks looking to be a therapist in the state of California. Um, and that I, I really want to have more folks who specialize in eating disorders. We need it. Uh, and so I, I provide supervision for folks working towards licensure. This has been amazing. Uh, Dr. Marcella, I'm so happy that you came on the show today to share this because it's something that people need to understand and it's not a glorified method to lose weight. You know, it's it's something that you really have to think about and think about what the negative outcomes could be and that we need to really think about, you know, what's best for our body. But, you know, today has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show and I really appreciate you and everything you do. Thank you, Stacy. It's been great being on the show with you. I look forward to more. Me too. You have a great day. You too.